Let's sit for prayer. Sit in Padmasan or Arth Padmasan. Back straight. Put your hands in Gyan Mutra. Gently close your eyes. Why we have two points? We have to do three times Omka and then Shanti. Okay. Keep your eyes closed. Long, deep breath in. And breathe out. Once more, long deep breath in and exhale. Breathe in for Omkar. Join your palms together, lock them. Put them on your eyes and slowly come back. So we will study joints. And we classified them into three categories. What were those? Movable, immovable. And and what is the third category of joints? Uh, partly movable. Yes. What are the example of immovable joints? Skull. Sutures. Partly movable. Ribs. Ribs, yes. Vertebrae. Vertebrae. And movable knee, mm. shoulder, head, ankles, ankles. 
Rest. Rest. Yes, all the those movable joints are movable, uh, like knee, shoulder, hip, ankle, wrist, elbows. Get your straight. I'm trying to miss. This this one. Are you right? A uh, W O R I S T. Okay, so immovable joints are also called as fibrous joints. Partly movable or carti cartilaginous. Movable are also called as synovial joints. They have synovial fluid in between. Okay. So you can take screenshot of this? Yes. Wait one second, please. Yes. Okay. Now we will study different types of synovial joints, okay, or immovable joints. Okay, first is hinge joint. Okay, hinge joint is somewhat like this. Okay, example of hinge joint is elbow and knee. Okay, elbow and 
knee. In this, what you get is flexion, extension. Okay, so this movement is along one axis. Okay, hinge. Example of hinge is a door. Okay, we have joints here. Okay, so here. This is the door. This here, we have a handle. Okay, so this door, it's moving. Okay, it can, the axis is this. Okay, this is the axis. Now, if I just hold this door, it can move like this. Okay, but this, this is the axis. This will not move. This will remain constant. Okay, but I can hold this portion. Okay, I can hold this handle. Like I'm huh? It's like the door moving. Yes, yes, the door. Okay, moving, uh, opening or closing, anyone. Okay, it's just that. It's, it can rotate along the axis. Okay. This portion of the door is not moving. This is rotating. It's a rotational movement. Okay. It's moving along this axis. Similarly, this elbow. Okay. This is the axis. This. So, you see, it's moving similarly. This is the hinge joint. And because of this hinge joint, we have this movement of flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. So here in hinge joint, we have flexion and extension. It is movement. along one axis. Okay. You can take screenshot of this? Yes. Okay, next we have pivot. Pivot joint. Example is ulna and radius. Okay, this joint is somewhat like this. Okay, in pivot, there is formation. And supination. We studied this yesterday. So what is happening? This, this is straight, okay. You see, I'm not moving from here. I'm not moving this, I'm not moving this. What I'm doing is, it is kind of rotation. Okay. Okay. Yes. So here, 
it is the because of these two bonds ulna and radius ulna and radius this supination okay once more i'll show you a diagram of this Okay, this is supination, the normal position. Okay, the uh, normal situation. It's called supination, and you see this. Okay, and you see this highlighted portion. Okay, then we have situation of pronation. you see how it has moved okay ulna and radius the radius has crossed the ulna okay this uh, movement is called pronation and this is a pivot joint you can take screenshot of this yes Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, we were studying uh, how do we keep our joints healthy? Yes, yesterday we were studying how to keep our like I already covered that today. So I'm just gonna. Then third is ball and socket. Any example of ball and socket joint? Shoulder. Shoulder and hip. Okay. So in this, what is happening? We have a whole kind of structure. Okay. Example is shoulder and this is the hip. Okay. okay. It's like there is a ball and there is a covering here. Okay. So in this, in this socket. In this socket, this ball, it fits and then it can move. Okay, it can move a lot of direction. This and this. Okay, so many, so many uh, movements in ball and socket. Like maximum kind of movements can happen through this ball and socket joint. Okay, and if there is any joint in the body which has the maximum movements, a kind of movements in the body, maximum kind of movements in the body is, can you tell me which joint is that? Most number of movements in which joint? Shoulder. 
please any guesses any guesses sure it's the shoulder it is the shoulder yes see we have ball and socket in both shoulder and hip but we have more movement in shoulder okay this is the most movable joint of our body this is slightly less than shoulder though both of them are ball and socket can you tell me why this is happening any idea mean? hmm what do you mean i mean that in shoulder there is more movement than a hip joint why because the range of movement is bigger yes there is more range of movement in shoulder i am asking why mm. cuz the bones are smaller yes because this socket the socket here is smaller while in hip joint it's bigger you see in shoulder it's only touching like this okay so it is able to move more but in hip joint it's covering like this so it has less movement yes so because of this the shoulder also has less stability it has more movement is higher in shoulder lower in hip and stability it is lesser and it is higher okay so because of this anatomy okay because this socket is smaller here it has more movement but because of that it has less stability while it's opposite in hip there is less movement as compared to shoulder but more stability as compared to the shoulder joint okay is this required that we have more stability in hip joint is it required or it was okay if the hip joint was also something like this i would say me it requires to be more stronger in the in or more stiff in the hip because it's supporting more the ball and socket joint is supporting the arm whereas the hip joint is supporting the whole hip and the whole torso good okay so what's happening you see so for this is now okay so this is hip joint Okay, here, and this is the shoulder joint. Here, see, this shoulder joint. It is what is it carrying? Only the arm, only this arm. Okay, whereas this joint, okay, it is carrying this whole body. The weight of this whole body is present on these two joints. They are. transferring this weight to the legs and then to your feet so that's why stability is more required in hip joint because it is carrying the weight of your body okay whenever you stand whenever you stand the weight of this body okay of your torso your arms your head okay it is reaching up to your toes of your feet through these hip joints so it has lot of weight to carry when you are moving the functioning of this hip joint it increases even more okay so here 
So, whenever you sleep, okay, before sleeping, what do you do? You you do little bit movements of the hip joint. Okay, just lie down. Okay, raise your legs. Then move them, rotate them. Okay, so that whatever tension is stored in your hip joints, it can be released every single day. Okay, like in your, your whenever you're practicing yoga, of course you're doing a lot of movements, but before you sleep, if you can just lie down and uh, raise your legs and then just do some rotations of your legs, okay? Like together, then anti-clockwise, then like this, okay? And then again, anti-clockwise. So this two minute exercise can release a lot of tension which gets stored in the hip joints due to the uh, workout or like whatever you did, you did in the day during the day. So this, uh, this is the ball and socket chain we are talking about. Okay, in ball and socket, what are movements do we have? We have flexion. We have extension. Then we have abduction. We have abduction, we have rotation, and we have circumduction. Okay, you can take a screenshot of this. Okay, so we were talking about Panchakarma and Naturopathy yesterday. Okay, but we could not uh, talk much about it. Okay, so you see, you, uh, you use your hip joint, your knee joints maximum. Okay, maximum stress is put on your hip joint, your knees. Okay, but we hardly take care of them. Of course, we are exercising. Okay, yesterday I gave you an analogy of a car. If you use a car every day for 100 kilometers, okay, and uh, then there is another situation where you do not use your car for five years. Okay, so when you do not use your car for five years, what happens? It rusts away. When you use your car every day for 100 kilometers or so, what happens? It's worn off. So what do you do after every six months or one year, maximum one year, you take your car for servicing. Okay, you take it to the service station. What happens at the service station? Okay, it will tighten all the nuts and bolts. Then it will also oil. Okay, they put some oil, engine oil, all that they put inside uh, the car and the joints. Okay, why they're putting oil? Lubrication. What? Lubrication. Yes, to reduce the friction. Okay, when there is uh, less oil, there is uh, there are some noises in the machine. But when they put oil, okay, it can function well. It will be frictionless. Wherever it is required, the frictionless movement, it will, uh, the oil will provide that frictionless movement. Okay. That's why they are putting oil or grease. Okay, these are uh, the substances which will reduce the friction and uh, also cancel the noise, reduce the noise. Okay, so this is what we have to do with our body. Okay, there are people who uh, do not work out at all. Okay, so their body will rust away. Then there are people who do a lot of workout. Okay. So what will happen? Their joints will be worn off. Their muscles, tendons, all this, they'll, they get worn off. But there is another category of people who do these kind of exercises, punch karma, naturopathy. Okay. In this, what happens? They take it, uh, their body for servicing. Okay. There is a lot of oiling done. Okay. I hope you have taken this uh, screenshot.
Okay. Yes. So uh, they have a uh, different kind of services like uh, normal full body massage they have. Okay. This is just taking warm oil or just oil and put on the body. Okay. And do a little bit of massage. Then they have portal massage. In this, what do they do? This is okay. There's a piece of cloth. And what they put? They put some leaves. Okay. Some leaves. You know what is a join? They put some herbs in it. Okay. Leaves are not just normal leaves, they're herbs like uh, castor leaves. Okay. Ankh, I don't know what it is called in English. Okay. So they, they put a lot of herbs in this. And they tie it. Okay. They put everything here. And then they tie it. They make it kind of like this. They tie a knot and tie something like this. And here we have all the herbs here. Yeah. Then what do they do? They, they take a hot pan. They put some oil here. They put some oil here. Okay. And then they hold it from this cloth. They warm it here on this pan. And this hot Herbs portly, okay. They massage on the joints, on where like full body. They can do this on full body, like from here till here. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, the body gets relaxed, the body gets oiled, and uh, it gets rejuvenated. Yes, I hope you got this. What is portly massage? Has anyone of you uh, gone for portly massage? Or heard of it? Of course. You have? Yes, many times. Okay. Have you ever taken this? Oh, I thought you said full body massage, my bad. Full body massage you have taken, but I'm talking about this one. Have you done this? No. No. Okay. So uh, you should go for this and uh, experience it. It's amazing. Plus, uh, the kind of uh, benefit you'll receive from this is amazing. Okay. And then there are other things also. Uh, there is like um, what else in Panchkaran? Panchkaran. There is Shirodhara. Yes, Shirodhara. Shirodhara is amazing technique. Okay. Shirodhara. It's for your head. So what happens? Suppose this person is lying on the bed. Okay, then there is a pot here and there is a hole here. So this from here, this hot water is coming down on the head. Okay, this is warm oil. Okay, this warm oil is... Uh, is dripping from this pot. Okay, it's dripping here continuously, continuously from here to here. Okay, so what happens? We have seen that uh, we have frontal bone and then we have this parietal bone. Okay, and here we are uh, putting oil here. So these joints, 
through this joint this oil it reaches inside of your head it penetrates the skull okay and it reaches up to your brain this is fine uh, so from here this do you understand this that when you are putting hot oil here th these are your frontal bones parietal parietal okay so from these joints the what the oil is able to reach up to your brain it nourishes your brain okay it relaxes your brain this is what you are looking forward to okay this i'm not saying that do this every day i would have suggesting is it is like you do it in 6 months or at least once a year okay just cleaning your body is not enough you have to oil it also so these are some practices of uh, uh, there is another uh, vasti nano vasti mm. okay in this what happens like earlier we used to take a dough we make a well kind of structure this is dough okay and then you put it on the knee around the knee and then in this you put warm oil okay again you can put this on your this is for knees this is for your all your body this is an amazing practice to nourish your knee and your body okay and especially like these two it's amazing because people have go through a lot of issues in their knees and vertebrae so this is an amazing practice so all this comes under panchkarma you can take a uh, screenshot okay so panch karm comes under ayurveda okay this is these are the techniques of ayurveda okay then we have naturopathy okay naturopathy it treats it treats on the basis basics of five elements what are those five elements can you tell me the five elements the five elements of the body can you tell me the name of the five elements of which this body is made of are you talking about earth wind and fire yes that's what i'm talking about talking earth about wind fire water and space fire, i'm guessing water fire air air and space 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. So for earth they have mud. Water, water. For fire they have like uh, steam. 
or hot oil. Okay, for air is like breathing practices from um, and space is fasting. Okay, so they use these techniques. If a person has any problem, they just go for any of these. They go for mud. They put mud all over the body. Okay, uh, they'll just make a few patches of mud. Like they'll just take a cloth, put a mud, put a slab of mud here. Okay, like it will be this, like this. Okay, uh, like this, like this. This much thick layer of mud. They'll just if I have some issue in my stomach, they'll just put this much thick layer of uh, mud wrapped in a cloth. A cotton cloth, like very thin cloth. Okay, only to hold this, to hold the mud. Okay, they'll put it on my stomach. If I have any problem on my head, they'll put mud on my head, on my eyes, neck. Like wherever they have problem, they'll just put mud because they have a concept that this mud. Okay, see, we eat food. Yes, like I eat uh, uh, an apple. Okay, where it grows, it grows on the tree. And from where uh, this uh, um, tree is getting nutrition, it's getting from the earth. That is mud. Okay. So the mud has all the nutrients that are required by me. Fine. So they have this concept that if I put mud on my head, suppose I have a problem in my head. I put mud over my head and what? This mud, it will take away all the toxins and it will give me, it will give me all the nutrients that is ha that it has, like whatever nutrient my body can absorb through that mud, it will give that. Okay. And it will take away the toxins of my body. So once I use this slab of mud, I cannot use it again. I have to throw it. Okay. Because it is believed that this, uh, it is, uh, it has toxins. Now it has to be disposed of. Yes. Then in water, what are, what do they have? They have like hot towel. Then cold towel. And what in this, what do they do? They just take a towel like this. Okay. They put it in hot water. They release all the water and then they put suppose i have problem on my head they'll put it all over my head then they'll put this for two minutes then again they the same cloth they put other another cloth they put in cold water they dip it in cold water and uh, squeeze out all the water and put it again on my head like hot and cold hot and cold multiple times okay so uh, it's kind of shock therapy which they they give Okay, so that the body is able to fight. Okay, so what they're doing in this, uh, they are trying. See, when it's too hot or too cold, the body tries to fight it. So they're trying to activate the neurons, the blood vessels there. Okay, whenever you face some kind of extremities, your body tries to fight it. Okay, so this is what they're doing. They're like putting hot towels, and then cold, uh, cold towel. Okay, so this like this is a shock therapy. They are providing shocks to the body so that body is fighting. And when the the body is fighting, they will be able to fight the problems that that are present in the body. Okay, so then they have uh, like hot water bath, cold water bath, then uh, uh, foot bath, cold foot bath, hot foot bath. All of this they have in water therapy like wherever they have problem they can put hot towel or just hot water okay like uh, during menses okay all the females during menses if you have pain in your abdomen or where anywhere so you can just uh, use hot water bag mine is uh, i believe uh, hot travel okay any problem? Okay. Yes. So uh, all the females, 
during your menses, you can use hot water bag instead of using medicine. Immediately, please go for hot water bag and cover yourself and just take rest. Okay. So when you keep your body warm, it will, the pain will go away. Okay. Then in fire, in fire, where uh, they use steam or hot oil. Okay, they have different techniques. They just put uh, wherever there is pain, they put that steam. Okay, at proper, uh, please do not perform this on your own. Please don't do this. Only do under supervision. Then uh, air pranayam they have. Then uh, fasting. There's a huge concept of fasting in uh, naturopathy. Whenever they see there is problem, they go for uh, fasting because you see they believe that there is morbid matter in the body and it needs to be released out of the body yes so they'll give you enema in the like first of all they'll give enema in naturopathy they just give enema okay so uh, and then they go for they ask you to go for fasting or eat as less as you can because they feel that when you have uh, given relaxation to your uh, digestive system, all the toxins will, will be released, whatever toxin is really is stored in your elementary canal, in your intestine. Okay, they will be released because you're giving time to your body. Okay, so this is how they uh, in naturopathy uh, they treat people. Okay. All right. Any confusion in Panchkarma or Naturopathy? No confusion, we're good. Great. Okay, now we have ellipsoid. Ellipsoid. In this, the bone is elliptical. Okay. In this, The example is wrist. Okay. So this wrist joint. Okay. We have carpals here. And we have radius here. Okay, so this radiocarpal joint. Let me show you a diagram of this. So you you see this uh, bigger joint, a uh, bigger bone. This is radius. And then here, this is radius and here we have carpal. Okay, so that's why this joint is called a radiocarpal joint or wrist joint. Okay, it is an example of ellipsoid. Okay, so you can take a screenshot if you want. I oh, have already taken it. Okay, no need. Okay, so in this, in wrist, okay, we have all those, uh, we have flexion, we have extension. We have uh, 
All these Okay, so next is saddle. Saddle joint. It's like this saddle. I'll show you a diagram of this, a picture of this. Of saddle joint. It appears. To be like this okay okay we'll cover this uh, uh, tomorrow let's sit for uh, prayer everyone sit comfortably in padmasan or art padmasan put your hands in gyan mudra this is Gyan Mutra. Okay. Put your hands in Gyan Mutra. Spinal cord straight. Gently close your eyes. Long deep breath in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathing for Omkar. Oh. oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Join your palms together. Rub them. Put them on your eyes. And slowly come back. Okay, see you tomorrow. Have a great day. All right, say goodbye. See you. Have a great day.